What's up guys, it's Chris. Today we're continuing the three meta build series with Oni and I'll be leaving timestamps to each build down below. For the first build, we have a great mix between info and slowdown to give you all the tools you need to dominate as Oni. We went with both movement speed add-ons to make the Oni move at 236.5% movement speed or 9.46 meters per second. We combined those with lethal to see all survivors at the start of the game and increase the aura reading on our second perk, barbecue and chili, to see the auras of survivors whenever we hook somebody. We also brought Call of Brine, so when we kick gens, they regress at 200% and give us some info, and eruption, so whenever we down a survivor, the gens we kicked explode and incapacitate survivors. This is a super fun and solid build, and this game is a great example of how to use it effectively. Lethal's gonna help us out a lot here. So yeah, they brought us the Ormond, which can be a rough killer map. One of the worst ones. Dude, this sword looks so cool. Yeah, this is my new favorite only weapon. Looks like they might have a distortion as well. They could also have spawned like behind the killer shack gen. We're going to definitely hit over here, though, where we saw three people. Just going to leave that pallet right away and try to play the TL, it looks like. That's a very early hit, which is amazing for Oni. So, generally speaking, when I get this first hit super early like that, I'm not even going to look for the down at all. No balance. Even though this would be a free down, for sure. Uh, I want to get my power more than anything. So I'm just not going to yet. Getting your power on Oni is more important than anything. Very nice. It's a really strong pallet to get out of the way as well. We'll give us our power. We might even get this god pallet too. I bet you he drops it and instantly drops down. Not right, close enough. Okay, we hear that other gen getting worked on, too. So I'm actually going to go kick this first. Get uh, Call of Bright Eruption going. And then, we're going to look for our hook right away. We have our power all ready to go. Scary situation. Well, that's got to be careful there. She's booking it. Might have been quick and quiet. I'm not too sure. It's a good down. We got eruption on that Steve as well. So let's see. Is he going to be on this pallet? Slugging's always good on Odie. We want to keep a little bit of an eye out here though. I thought we could have got a little bit more value there. We're still not picking up Claudette. I want my eruption back on here. Take all the info we can get to. All right, we'll get over here. We got that crane pallet out of the way super early on, which makes it a little less safe here. Another sprint burst. Looks like they're all sprint bursters. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a group. We definitely want to keep her kind of on this edge of the map. This is the only reason I would do that. Yeah, they're all sprint bursters. I think it's all four of them. Uh, you know what? He's gonna go right back for this gem with no sprint burst and no pallet here. This is good. I haven't got any Call of Brian info over there, either. Which means they're not on that gen at the very least. Ormond's one of those maps where they just have so many pallets and the gens are so spread out. Oh. Did not expect that big of a fuck up. I still didn't get any Call of Brian info there, even though he was on it. It's a really good eruption though. So let's see what Barbecue is going to tell us after this hook. This could be a huge uh, use of our power here. It's two. I, again, am not seeing the last one. I'm guessing that's the distortion. Good. Sprint burst Claudette. Got her. And what I'm thinking is the Kate's going to be booking it for save right about now. Which was the correct play. And we're going to... Oops. That's because of the barbecue info, knowing she was over on this side. 
uh, and kind of gonna be coming this way for the save. Unfortunately, I have no idea where that force survivor is because he has distortion. Uh, but I'm guessing he'll be getting the save in just a sec. No, he actually picked up that Claudette. So I'm gonna float around here. Maybe this guy will end up hitting second. He does. No swing from me. I'm not swinging for that sprint burst, buddy. I really want to see... There he is. Okay. This Steve's in a bad spot. Bad, bad spot. If she touches Steve, she automatically loses the BT. Or if she had off the record, she loses it automatically. And there goes Steven. It's looking like game. This pallet is gone. Wait. Was she not just healthy? Okay, well that was different. There you go, Claudette. Good game, Kate. So, for the second game, we went a very simple but effective build for Oni. We kept the purple movement speed add-on, but this time with the scalp top knot, so our power activates faster. And for the perks, we have Corrupt to block the gens at the start for two minutes, which helps us get our power without losing too many gens. Monitor and Abuse to make our terror radius 24 meters while not in chase, but 40 meters while in chase, which pairs great with our next perk. Infectious Fright, which makes all survivors in our terror radius scream whenever we down somebody. And finally, we have Sloppy Butcher to make survivors take much longer to heal. This build is all about keeping it as simple as possible while still giving Oni all the tools he needs to be the powerhouse that he is. And this game is an example of how to use it. Rotten Fields with the second meta Oni build. Yeah, this one is very simple, very bare bones. Some okay slowdown info, ways to sneak up on people, get the first hit with monitor. So Corrupt also kind of allows us to just patrol a few gens at the start rather than all of them trying to get that first hit. And it also pairs really well with Monitor because we'll be able to sneak up on people a little bit better with the smaller terror radius. Get that first hit a little bit easier. Just like that. Again, remember, uh, one thing about Corrupt is it does go away once you get that first down. But as Oni, we don't want the first down to be super quick. We want to get all the, enough Blood Orbs for our power first. It's really important. We might even end up getting Shack Pellet here. I think he vaults. Perfect. Oh, my bad. Dead Hard kind of made his character look like it was in a little bit of a different spot. Infectious, huge here. This is one of those infectious procs that could be just a straight up game ender. There you are. Go right back there. Okay, we found Ace as well. Honestly, uh, really good start. We're gonna get her into the basement right away. Leave Jane Slug for a bit. Okay, so that's really, really good. Uh, the one thing you have going for you on Rotten Fields' is killer, honestly, is uh, that basement right in the middle here. Other than that, pretty fucking bad map for killer. Uh, I'm not gonna play around it right now. We could, and it would be very, very bad for them. But, in all honesty... I want to get this power going again. Play off of our monitor infectious. Much more fun that way. So let's get some more blood orbs off this chain. I think we'll get this power real soon. Great. That's great. And all we want to do here is push her to the outside before breaking the pallet so she has nowhere to go. He seemed pretty new. But that was a decent play. Very risky. He's winning the 50-50s. Here's what we do here. No taking hits against this. Big. We should have... It's only one infectious on the Jade. Okay, we got another one to our right. Not sure who that's going to be. Zarina. Very, very quiet, too. Looks like Iron Will. Oh, no. Off the record. And Dead Hard coming up. Remember that? Very nice. So much pressure just from the downs here. I believe that's also our second hook on Zarina. 
Which puts a lot of pressure on their team, somebody had to be in death hook this early on. She should have left a decent amount of blood orbs on this gen too, staying on here injured for so long. Yeah, that's really good. And now the other group is kind of healing up with Sloppy. Okay, they do end up getting that gen over in the corner. I'm gonna pop my power right away. Because I think Claudette's gonna be hitting up that save as soon as she can. She is the only healthy person. Oh, I see some birds. No infectious there. I see you though, you little devil. Looks like Claudette is actually just letting Zarina die, which is not what I expected, but we'll take it. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Very greedy on those gens. You always gotta be uh, thinking about your team more than just getting the gens done, especially this early on as a survivor. That's a really bad play by Claudette. Having somebody dead with three gens to go puts your whole team in a very bad spot. It's not just uh, the Zarina that suffers for that there. So we're in it. We're we're pretty much just securing a win already. Not bad. Yeah, it's a very simple build, but if you can play around the perks how you're supposed to, at it's really, really strong. You don't need much more than this, honestly. Really good add-ons, too. Hmm. Look at all these. There she is in that corner. You see her? I'll pretend I don't for a second. Yeah, game, Claudette. Honestly, um, I think we played pretty well, but we won really hard because of this guy just letting Zarina die. All right, guys, for the final build, we went pretty mean with the double duration add-ons, allowing us to use our power for up to 63 seconds. The Scordons to give us info anytime survivors are grouping up on the gens. Pain Resonance to regress the gen with the most progress by 15% when hooking someone on a Scorch hook. Gift of Pain to put Mangled and Hemorrhage on survivors hooked on those hooks and give them a 16% repairing speed penalty if they heal. And no way out to block the gates in endgame for 60 seconds. This is by far the gnarliest build in my opinion and it can be super hard to do anything against it but i'll let you guys see that for yourselves in this last game okay we got cold tower let's get it this build is pretty pretty sweet hard to do a lot here i think survivors can actually spawn behind shack with this killer spawn but i didn't see it there we know for sure hattie's here we got dwight we're gonna pressure this gen it's like a sprint burst on this guy We'll leave that right away. Get a nice early hit on Hattie. Alright, now, as we've done for the past couple games, now all we're worried about is building up our power. If she wants to stay at this pallet, actually, this is fantastic for me. She's going to opt to leave, which is going to be a free down if I wanted it. But I don't. And we got it. All right, so now we head over to Discordance. Much better use of our power here. Two healthy survivors working on a gen together. Very nice. Let's see if we can get that Dwight too. That'd be pretty huge. Like we got scratch marks all the way over here. So risky there. guy is playing insanely risky. Wow. The 50-50 king. Look at that. Every single 50-50 one. Every single one. There we go. That's it. I knew it too. I waited for it. That's why I didn't swing right away. My bad. There, I think he just was pretty lucky. It's a strong... Macmillan has strong TLs. They're huge. It's not like auto even. Nice. She's gonna drop this. Good 
good, good. Nobody touching that. Somebody is around here. Looks like that's gonna be the Dweet. Big. Look at that. I saw the grass moving, so I knew he was holding the corner. No E. Good to know. This is going to be an E. Look at all those blood orbs, too. Now we're in business. We have blood orbs everywhere. We got our power ready to go. Two people down. Only thing we need is another scorch hook for this guy. I don't think we have one nearby, though. Uh, no, not quite. That's fine. Uh, again, if we wanted to play really mean here, uh, because on Oni, well, E button. So now we know where all four survivors are. That's pretty huge. I feel a little bit robbed. I'm not gonna lie to you, but shit happens, right? Nice, well played. I thought he'd go for the window. See if we can get that Claudette as well. That'd be pretty huge. Might just be able to get her with the power here. Oh! I tried to swing right at the end. Okay, I think that's our second hook on Hattie. So, not smart to be so greedy there. Another pain res coming up as well. So, blood orbs do stay permanently until you pick them up. But there can only be up to 100 uh, in the map at any given time. So, if it's capped, then they'll just stop making them. As far as I know. That's big stuff. Another gift of pain coming up. Oh, Discordance telling us exactly where we want to go. Very nice. Claudette is over here injured as well. That should be a pretty easy down. I don't think she actually has anything here. I wait 10 minutes for a fucking dead heart, man. Yeah, there's no way we make that pain res over there. Rich, that does happen too sometimes. Running something like score trucks, just having bad RNG on them. But, not the worst thing. See Ada there, there's our Dwight. This is Hattie. Hey, buddy! Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Looks like this guy's actually dead, so that's gonna be really nice. I think we should also have some blood orbs in the top of main building there. Good game, dude. And they're popping right on that gin together. Which is interesting. Claudette really hates healing, it looks like. Which is what Gift of Pain does to people. You don't want to heal because of the gen slowdown, but you kind of have to heal. The boon is right over here, so I'd be surprised if they weren't like in shack or behind it. Remember the dead hard coming up? Did get that out of the way. And we should be able to make this pain res to our left. Looks like this gen to my right's actually zeroed now. Wow. That's pretty huge. I'm not even gonna bother taking care of the boon because if they're healing through Gift of Pain, that's like a positive for me, honestly. And if they're not, it's still good. It's just a win-win for me. She actually killed herself on the hook, doesn't want to be in this match anymore. One is around here. Quick take. I'm actually gonna do a loop around this so they think I left and then maybe they'll pop back up. Yep. Sometimes you can bait out some sneaky, sneaky survivors that way. 
Okay, and then we should be able to get our power here, and I'm gonna go check on the main building, Jin, with it. Very nice. Mm, no, looks like she might just be hiding it out. And we do have four stacks of no way out as well here. Uh, which means the gates are blocked for 60 seconds when she touches them. And that pretty much means she's just dead. There she is. Now we know exactly where she's at. Very nice. Good game, Ada. It's a pretty, this build's pretty gnarly. It's really fun, too, playing around all these kinds of perks. Really, really useful. Discordance is awesome with Oni's power. Chaining downs together and finding people grouped up. Good game, though. That is going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to see next. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.